My name is Byron Jam, a physical therapist in Toronto. And what my goal in this short video is to demonstrate some novel exercise concepts. Now, traditional exercise that we, we give as physiotherapists in open kinetic chain, closed kinetic chains, I can say they're mostly non-functional. For example, quad overall exercises that we give to patients after knee uh, replacement. They're, you can't consider them functional. They're great at, I guess, waking up the quad, but they're not functional. They don't get the person back to walking, necessarily, or helping them get out of the car. After straight leg raise with an ankle weight, they strengthen the leg, but they're not necessarily functional getting people back. Even what athletes do, lunges, squats. So doing a squat, doing a perfect lunge in perfect form. In real life, how often do we have to do this perfect squat? They're not functional, for example, to get the athlete back into uh, sports that involve you know, quick uh, thing, quick uh, movements and jerks and all across the planes. The exercises that I'm about to demonstrate, I learned from a, a physical therapist from Michigan named Gary Gray. And his concept was exercises need to be functional in a three-dimensional plane. And that's my goal in this short video. The directions that we're going to be uh, going into is basically the eight directions. Anterior, anterolateral, lateral, posterolateral, posteriorly, posteromedial, medial, anteromedial, and anteriorly again. Let's get started right now. These exercises can be done by people who've had bilateral hip replacement, using a walker, or a high-level athlete. Let's assume right now you have a patient who's had bilateral hip replacement and they're with a walker, or a single leg hip replacement. They're with the walker, and we're going to do the step star exercises on the star mat here. The step start exercise is you just step forward and back. Enter laterally, I'm pretending to be holding the walker, and then lateral and come back. Posterior lateral and come back, and posterior and come back. And we repeat that same thing with the contralateral leg, step anterior, enter lateral, lateral, posterior lateral, and posterior, and come back. As you can see, that exercise was a very simple exercise that patients understand. And yet you went in different planes instead of just one plane of motion. Next, let's say they don't have a hip replacement, they have a knee replacement or severe knee OA. And we can now do the full star exercise, which involves stepping but going in the medial plane also. And so let's demonstrate this right now. So we're gonna, I need you to stand up right now because I want you to participate in this exercise video or else it's useless to just sit there and watch it. So get up right now and just do this exercise once. So step forward, anteriorly, and come back. Enter lateral, and come back. Lateral, and come back. Posterior lateral, and come back. Posterior, and come back. This is where it gets fun. Posterior medial. You wouldn't give this to somebody with a hip replacement though. And then medial, and come back. Anterior medial, and come back, and when with anterior. And you do the same thing on the contralateral side. Now, this was for a person who has a, you know, recently post neo way or high irritability. You can give this exercise now to somebody who's got just patellofemoral syndrome, who is pain with aggressive exercises. We can add lunges. Let's do star lunges. What are star lunges? Same thing, except we're gonna make this step wider. Here we go, anterior. Anterior lateral, posterior lateral. People ask, what do I do with my other foot? Should it come forward, should it come? It doesn't matter what you do. I'm just happy that the patient is moving. Put medial, come back, anterior medial, and come back in three dimensions. And you would repeat the same thing on the contralateral leg. Now, if you want to make this exercise a little bit more challenging to add the glutes, which frequently people with hip OA, knee OA require, then you can add dumbbells. Now, the dumbbells, you can use 5 pounds, 10 pounds, minimal weight is needed to get a pretty good workout. So you stand on the red footprints of the star mat, and we simply hold the dumbbells by our side and add the load. Anteriorly, anterior lateral, lateral, posterior lateral. The studies show that these anterior lunges and the posterior lunges can get quite an effective workout on the gluteus maximus and gluteus medius activation. In fact, one of the best muscles that's activated is the vastus medialis with this exercise. Next, what you can do if you really want to activate the gluteus maximus and the medius, it's called bend forward to the knee. Bend forward to the knee and come back and do a bicep curl. Anteriorly, bicep curl. Lateral, bicep curl. Posterior lateral, bicep curl. This is one of the better ways to activate the gluteus maximus 
gluteus medius in every plane of motion rather than one plane. And the beauty of it is it's functional. For example, if somebody's had an ACL tear and you want to get them to basketball, you can do all the squats. It doesn't mean they're ready to go back to do this, for example, that you have to do in a, in a typical basketball game or volleyball game or in tennis. If you want to make this even more aggressive to get an amazing glute and hamstrings workout, which is crucial for ACL injury, is to go all the way down to the ankle and then come back into the bicep curl. Enter lateral, bicep curl. Lateral, bicep curl. Posterior lateral, bicep curl. Posteriorly, bicep curl. I want you to go along and do this. Posterior immediately. Now you realize this is an awkward position to be in, but that's the whole point. You want to get the muscle fibers firing in every angle. The only contradiction, contraindication to this is pain. No pain is allowed. For example, if they report a pain in the medial plane, they say, don't go that far, go less. If they still report a pain in that, just skip that plane, go into a different plane. I found personally compliance to be extremely high with these exercises. It takes about three to five minutes to do them. I only give three of them to a patient. And if they do it once or twice a day, you can bet that they'll maintain their range and improve in their agility. So there's two purposes to this exercise. One is, well, three purposes. To increase their strength and mobility, all that stuff. But I would say the most benefit of these exercises is proprioceptive. You're teaching their body, if I'm in this position, how am I going to come back? So in all the different uh, eight uh, directions that we're going to go to. Now, you can make this more functional based on the patient's needs. For example, if they're a basketball player, I make them literally hold a basketball and do rotations. Enter lateral, rotate, as if they're passing the ball. And then you can go the whole play, passing the ball, ipsilateral, or then you can do it contralateral rotation with the same foot, with the trunk. You can give these exercises to people with low back pain during the re rehab phase. We want to strengthen, get them back to function. If they have, for example, you want to really strengthen, medicine ball. It's the most amazing workout to do just holding it. You can add twisting to it if their job involves rotation and twisting, but you do it in all the different eight planes. Now, if they have to go back to tennis, they haven't gone back to tennis, fear, they've had an injury at their knee, then you don't want to just jump back into playing tennis. You can simulate this in the star exercise where you go step forward and do an overhand serve. Enter lateral, overhand serve. You can do one set of exercises with the star overhand, one set of exercises doing the backhand, one set doing the forehand in the all different planes, as you can see. Now, what if they've had an ankle sprain? We know proprioception is very important, and I've taught various ways of how to uh, evaluate proprioception using the star mat, which is in other videos that you may have seen. So, standing single leg balance is great, but we need it more dynamic and functional. For example, we're going to do lunge hops. I need you to stand up and actually try the lunge hops. And posterior medial, medial across, anterior medial, and then anterior. And then you repeat the same thing with the other contralateral leg. Next thing you can do is jumps. Typical post Achilles tendon. Not with these. They eventually have to start jumping, so you can do the full start. You can do the fast. Um, you can do it clockwise or counterclockwise. To make this more challenging, then you can do long jumps and getting back into this star map, into the center. And the final thing that you can do that's a high level for foot and ankle issues and proprioceptive retraining is single leg hops. As you can see, it takes quite a bit of coordination to do this, and if you see an asymmetry, for example, one leg they just can't do it, then you know that patient is not ready to go back to sport without either taping their ankle or wearing an ankle brace. Um, and the ultimate exercise is difficult to do, is single leg hops long distance. So you hold it there, and you come back and hold it. Hold it there, and if you do it in all planes, it's a pretty good exercise. I hope you can appreciate the limitless amount of exercises that can be done on the star mat, or just using the concept in these eight planes. And I hope you found this short video educational, and many of your patients will benefit from these exercises. Thank you.